All right, we're going to work on our um, reverse perspective drawing here. And I want to do just a little quick demo to help you um, understand the template and um, some of the instructions along the side. So um, let's just go over the requirements real quick. Linear perspective is going to use vanishing points. Um, the center of the back wall here is going to be the vanishing point for anything that you do on the left or right walls. Um, the top of the back wall vanishing point here is going to be for anything that you put on the floor. And the bottom wall, back wall, is going to be for anything <clears throat> excuse me, that would need to be drawn in perspective um, that will appear on your ceiling. I know that seems a little strange from any perspective that you may have done before, but since we are going to take this um, two-dimensional drawing and actually turn it into um, an object that is going to be a little bit three-dimensional to give us that um, reversed perspective illusion and also that movement um, as you interact with the um, piece when it's all finished. Okay, So on the back wall, which is the, the rectangle in the center here, um, you need to have a picture, a window, um, and or a door, um, embellishments like curtains, scenery out the window, a frame around any pictures or wallpaper, etc. would be any types of embellishments that would be um, good to do on this back wall. So let's just kind of do a little quick drawing on that back wall. The most important thing that you're going to always do is to use your ruler. Um, and any time that you're working on this back wall, you want to make sure that your lines are going to all be parallel to either the top and the bottom wall edge or the side edge. And if you know what parallel is from um, math classes, that means that it's going to be equal distance all the way. And no matter how far we draw that line out, they would never, ever touch. So let's just, um, let's put in a door here. So I'm going to kind of eyeball things a little bit here on this back wall. I'm looking like I'm parallel here, like this distance is the same as this distance. Actually, I might go up a little bit if I'm going to do a door, it might be slightly taller. And what I'm going to do is, and I'll probably draw a little darker than I normally would just because I want to make sure that it's going to show up in the video so that you can see um, anything that's on there. So let me just do a quick check on the video to make sure, yes, you can see that. So that's very good. All right, so that would be maybe the top of my wall, or excuse me, door. So now I'm gonna do the sides of my door. Again, I would make sure that this would be parallel. So same distance here as it is here so that that door seems like it is straight on the wall. We're not doing a haunted house right now. We're doing it, um, a regular nicely constructed straight house. So again, the other side of my door, I would wanna make sure that this distance is about the same as this distance so that that door looks nice and straight. Now just to keep this simple for demonstration purposes, maybe I'll just come in here and I'll put in a simple doorknob. Now you could add in details like a window in the door, um, anything like that, or make it look like it's a wood panel door, anything like that. Okay, um, so then let's maybe add in uh, a window here. So again, I would check to make sure that my distance is going to be parallel. I'm going to draw in a side of my window. I would come over here and, excuse me, that's my bird clock going off at 5 o'clock here. So as I'm making the video, and I'm going to make sure that this distance is the same again. I'm going to come down from the top. A good way to make sure it's parallel, too, is to start at the, at the edge of the wall and just pull your ruler down to make it um, give you that help a little bit to make sure that it's even. So I just made my top of my window the same height as the top of my door. I'm gonna pull that down, kinda check to make sure that I'm parallel, and I would have the window there. Now, as for details, I could um, maybe add in some scenery out the window. So maybe I'm gonna just put in kind of a tree branch here a little bit. This technique is called scumbling. Um, maybe you don't even see the trunk or maybe the trunk is just off to the side here. 
Um, and maybe I've got some falling leaves because right now it happens to be October, so maybe we'll just make it look like a fall scene out the window. All right, so we'll say that that's good enough for the back wall right now. Probably could add in a few other embellishments, but just for demonstration purposes. That's gonna be by far the easiest wall to do um, because we don't actually have to use a vanishing point for anything. We do have to make sure that our lines are parallel though to the top and bottom and both sides of the wall. You could also add in a wood frame around here, um, like the woodwork, same thing around the door. Any of those things would be considered embellishments. So let's just work on either the left or right wall for right now. Um, let's um, go to the left wall and let's maybe, let's put a piece of artwork hanging on the wall. Now, anything that is the top or the bottom of the work of art in this instance um, is going to point to that vanishing point that is in the center of the back wall. So again, I'm gonna probably draw a little darker. You might draw a little lighter uh, because um, you want to um, erase any unnecessary lines later. So I'm just drawing in, that's gonna be what is gonna be the um, top of my work of art. And now I'm gonna just draw in kind of the bottom of my work of art that I'm having hanging on my wall. Again, that was pointing to that vanishing point in the center of the back wall. Anything on the left or right wall will point to that center vanishing point. Now, once I've got my top and bottom pointing to that vanishing point, I do need to make sure that my sides of my artwork or window or whatever it is that you're adding is going to still stay parallel to that wall edge. So this is not going to point to a vanishing point, but it's going to be parallel. And I do have just a little bit that I'm going to need to erase there. And it seems to have erased very well. Again, it might be easier if I come from this direction because I can go from this line, bring it out parallel, and draw in that back edge of my artwork. Now, I'm not going to take the time to draw anything specific as for artwork. Just know that that is the technique that you will use. The top and the bottom lines of the artwork are going to point to the vanishing point in the center of the back wall. The sides are going to go parallel to the wall edges. So you would follow the same process for anything on the right wall. Um, windows, doors, um, we've had people add furniture. That's a little bit more advanced um, process, but it certainly can be done. So anything that you want to think there. The requirements for the left and right walls are a total of three or more pictures, windows, and or doors, etc. But must have something on each wall. So you can't just add three things on the left and say, well, I've made the requirement, so I don't have to do anything over here. You do need to have something on each wall, but a total of three or more on the two together. And then embellishments as noted above. So checking off the list of embellishments here again. So again, if I were to add, obviously I would normally in a situation add something to the right wall. Um, actually, I would need a couple of things if I was not adding anything else in perspective on the left wall. But I'm going to just not do that for right now because I want to move on to show you some things um, with the floor or ceiling. Uh, the next thing happens to be the ceiling. The requirement for that is that you have a light fixture of some sort. Um, your light fixture may or may not have to be drawn in perspective, but let's just say we're going to draw in a fluorescent light bar um, in the center of our ceiling. Uh, so I can demonstrate you are going to use the vanishing point that is on the bottom of the back wall to draw that in so I would and I'm going to make it go off the top of the ceiling so that we're not actually seeing the whole thing I'm going to come over and I'm going to draw the other side of that again I'm going to line up to the vanishing point and I'm going to try to maybe center it so I'm going to just draw it off here and then uh, now that I've drawn those lines in perspective the um, back edge of that light bar would again be parallel to this wall. So if I line my ruler up, kind of eyeball it so that I have an equal distance here and equal distance here, I can draw in that back line, 
have just a little bit to erase, okay? Um, pretty simple concept right there, but um, again, you would go into maybe adding some more details, maybe again adding a frame around it. Maybe you'd have two or three light bars um, on your ceiling, entirely up to you, but I definitely want you to show your creativity. Now let's talk about the floor. There are several creative things that you can do with the floor. Um, one of them would be that you could add in what would look like wooden flooring or uh, a checkerboard, um, anything like that. But let me just show you how you would do that. Anything that's going to go on your floor is going to point to the vanishing point that is at the top of the back wall. So I'm going to just kind of line up there and I'm just going to start drawing what is going to look like maybe some floorboards. Actually, I think what would be easier is if I kind of just made some marks across the bottom here. Um, and I'm just going to make every half inch, I'm going to make a mark here. It just happens to work out really well. And um, those will be my little lines that I'm going to line up to. Again, I'm going to line up to that vanishing point. Then I would line up to my little mark that I made. Then I would come to my floor and I would draw that off. Again, I'm going to pivot up here at my vanishing point at the top of the back wall. I'm going to then line up with my mark and I'm going to draw that line off. I'm going to do this, just continue doing that across the bottom of my floor here, lining up to that top vanishing point. And you can see my technique is I kind of put my pencil point there and I pivot and then I just draw it in, kind of pivot. Let's see here, I gotta move my ruler a little bit. Get in there to pivot, draw that in. Now you can kind of see how it looks like. Maybe I have some large tile. Um, I could maybe do this as a checkerboard. Now, um, to do this as a checkerboard, there is a, a technique about doing it, is if I line up one of my corners of my back wall with my ruler, and I line up on what would be the bottom edge over here, which would be the edge of your paper likely, and then if I just make a tiny little mark down my ruler, just indicating where I'm gonna make marks on those, Okay, now you can eyeball this and go parallel or you can go this direction and do the same kind of marks and then connect them. But for um, just time's sake, I'm gonna kind of eyeball it. Now I've got my little mark right there lined up. I'm gonna draw across my floor. I'm gonna come back down, line up to my next mark. Now the reason I did that is that evenly spaces out in perspective um, the, as you know, things that are in the distance get smaller or closer together. And that is sometimes hard to um, just eyeball. So by making those marks, by mathematical magic, which don't ask me how because I am not a mathematician, but it helps to kind of um, evenly space out those lines. See how they're getting further apart? as we get down toward um, our stomach or the edge of our drawing surface. Okay, and it just kind of spaces it out. It actually makes it look like an even uh, greater illusion of depth. So again, that would be the way that you could do a checkered floor. So um, just some basic concepts as um, to doing um, the reverse perspective drawing using the various vanishing points. Um, let's just quickly go over the other requirements. Overlapping, be creative, add at least two or more other objects to your room that demonstrates overlapping. Um, in the end, a little um, asterisk here, outline everything with a Sharpie pen and pen is underlined. You want to use the Sharpie pen, not Sharpie marker. Um, even the thin Sharpie markers because they will bleed out a little bit and make too thick of a mark, so use the Sharpie pen. Talking about aerial perspective, add color with colored pencil evenly and smoothly. That means we don't want to see any of your pencil lines. We want to just nice a smooth shading and you can also um, take a look at my sample in the classroom and um, 
that will help you to see kind of exactly what I'm talking about. Use brighter, more vibrant colors near the edges so you would color heavier, darker color and then gradually let it get lighter as it goes toward that back wall. Again, take a look at the sample for that. Uh, any scenery out windows and or doors will have less detail as well as have less vibrant colors. Uh, use a ruler and ballpoint pen to trace on the fold lines. It's indicated which ones are fold lines. Okay, it says you will use it as well as the back wall is a fold line. Um, this will make your folds more crisp. Use a ruler and a ballpoint pen for that. Cut on all lines marked as cut lines as well as vertical lines to cut off instructions. So you'll eventually be cutting off these instructions and discarding those, but I thought they were handy to have there for you the whole time. Cut away um, the small shaded areas, these little triangles up here and these other little odd shapes down here. Just kind of cut those away when you're all finished. Sign your work, and as you know, that means on the front, not on the back. You may put it on the back also, but definitely just kind of down here in the corner or somewhere insignificant, just sign it. Use glue stick to glue the tabs on back to make your work a 3D reverse perspective. Um, just again, a quick, simple how-to, and I know these are gonna be great. These are gonna be highly successful, and um, we'll hang them up probably in the hallway to share our optical illusions with the rest of our school. Thank you.